What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, still feeling under the weather, but here we are with another video going over the Prime Resurgence that dropped today with Wukong and Equinox Prime. We'll be talking about what these frames are useful for, with some good builds for them, also talking about uh, the accessories as well, because there'll be some accessories here that are pseudo-new. I guess they're kind of new for Prime Resurgence. But yeah, do those types of videos. Make sure you're subbed. We do daily Warframe video uploads. Sorry if I can't really talk properly right now. I've got a lot going on, so let's get into it. So first off, we get the Prime Resurgence to start today. This will be going for about two weeks, and the frames for this one are going to be Equinox Prime and Wukong Prime. I'll show you some builds here, but as far as the accessories for Wukong, we've got the Jindo Prime Cyandana. A little stiff, if you ask me. Kind of clips through a lot of stuff. I don't like this one. Some people like this one. we got the... Sanzang Kubrow skin bundle. I'm not sure which. This is probably with Equinox Prime, I believe. Uh, so it comes with Kubrow armor, which that's what it looks like. It has eyeballs on it, I guess. Uh, there's a Kubrow collar as alongside that armor, and there's some special uh, Kubrow like, fur pigments, I guess I'd call it. And it'll change the color of your Kubrow's fur. Also, the Kubrow fur, prime fur patterns. This will make your dog, all your, your dog will look like this when you equip this. So a pretty decent amount of stuff in here, uh, besides the incubator power core and all this stuff that you just can build normally. Uh, the things you actually get from this are like these six items at the top. We also got the special Corpusant Prime Cyan Data, or sorry, Ephemera. This comes with Wukong Prime, or rather it is Wukong Prime's Ephemera. It's not a great Ephemera, it's this energy effect around your character. Never really liked it, that's too Regal Aya for that. And then for Equinox, we got the... Isabo Prime Cyan Data. Actually, some players do like this. It does take color customization quite well for two Regal Aya. Definitely a very cape-like. And we've got the Narvar Prime Armor Set. Very droopy. I'm not a huge fan of this one personally, but hey, if you like it, there you go. Um, and that is going to be the accessories. That's the stuff down here is for like Frost and Mag. And then we've got the Bobbleheads, of course, if you want to check those out. Now let's get into the uses and builds for these two frames. The weapons are kind of like whatever, the the uh, Zuge Prime and all that. Let's not worry about that, no. There's two main builds that I use for Wukong. I've got a tank build, just for like no normal gameplay. Normal build with no helmet involved. So we got Umbra mods, we got Adaptation, we got a uh, Narrow Minded. The one of the stats you really want on Wukong is Duration, as it makes your Cloud Walker last for longer, which you fly through the mission quicker. Uh, and I actually consider Wukong one of the best spy frames in the game. If you are like, oh man, I need, I need an invisibility frame to do these spy missions because they're so like, you know, I don't know the, the layout of these maps. Wukong is a pseudo invisibility frame. While you're in your second ability, Cloud Walker, you are invisible. And you can also go through lasers like you're a cloud because you literally, it's called Cloud Walker, you turn to a cloud. So he's great for uh, spy missions. And I've actually got a special spy build for you uh, that uses a special helmet ability called Perpacipicity. Now, the big thing there is that you are not really modding for tank as much with this loadout. You're just modding for a bunch of duration and basically the ability to cast your... You're modding for the ability to cast your abilities more frequently with things like natural talent and having maximum energy uh, amount. So, here's the build in the footage right here. Um, it's going to be a spy build, as I stated. And if you have the helmet system, you can throw in this, this ability called Perpacipicity. Gives you a guaranteed hack. If you don't have this, you can just use ciphers, or you can just hack it as normal. Uh, the big things here, preparation, so you spawn the mission with full energy. And then everything else is just duration. The longer duration you have, the longer you're in your cloud form, and then the further you can fly. Um, power strength is not going to really affect this at all. It, it gives you some healing, I guess, but not a big deal. And person pacificity is not affected by really any stats at all either. We're just reducing the energy cost of streamline. You don't, like, really, you could use this build, this build very bare bones. You don't need this mod, uh, this mod, this, you don't need, like, most of this stuff. It's just all for convenience, so increased duration and the things of that nature. But yeah, Wukong used to be uh, a, build, a frame I played a lot. Like, I had this YouTube comments build for just, like, reading YouTube, or uh, responding to YouTube comments while I was, you know, playing a mission. But they did nerf his cloud, uh, rather, his, uh, his Celestial clone. This thing pulls from your ammo pool now, so he's not as good as he used to be, but still pretty good. And then a lot of players do like his Iron Staff, uh, which is basically an exalted melee weapon with some decent damage. The build for that, I don't really, I don't use it very often, but it's a corrosive build, I believe. Yep, corrosive condition overload. Pretty standard stuff for nowadays. Now, moving on to Equinox. Um, Equinox is definitely a frame that is not meant for spy missions, but you could use it for spy missions if you felt like it. Uh, what Equinox is going to be doing is she's going to be a nuker frame 
with a little bit of light CC potential. Uh, the main thing that Equinox is used for is going to be nuking, though, in the day form. So the way Equinox works, there's a night form, and you can switch between night form and day form with the first ability called Metamorphosis. Um, most players do mod around the day form, though. Just keep that, keep that in mind. So you can think about it like this. In day form, you have damage attacks and damage debuffer attacks. In night form, you have healing attacks and, like, even more deep CC attacks and, like, tanking and stuff. That's how you can kind of, kind of look at it. Uh, we've got the second ability, Terrify from Necros, which will make it where enemies will lose their armor. And the reason that's so important is that Equinox's fourth ability, Mend and Maim, basically the one in day form that nukes enemies down, this is heavily diminished by enemy armor when you release the damage wave. So you want to make sure the enemies have no armor if possible. That's why Terrify is on here. Normally, uh, the second ability in Equinox is like a, it's either a sleep or a, an enrage ability to make enemies move quicker. So this is the main build I use in Equinox. Keep in mind, there are some Archon Shards missing. Uh, I usually had Archon Shards in her, but uh, the big thing here is you want to make sure you have enough armor, uh, enough power strength to get full armor strip with Terrify. That's why the Arcane Molt Augmented done here on kill, we get increased power strength. That will stack into this and we'll get full armor strip with this fully stacked up. My usual build would actually take off Intensify for like Lightning Dash or more movement speed, uh, but you know, I'd rather just make it nice and simple for you guys so we have Intensify on here usually. Right now, at least. Combined with Corrosive Projection, no armor for the enemies, and they will get nuked down quite easily. As you can see right here, this is uh, Day 4 Equinox gameplay. Not exactly a high-level mission, but Equinox can work very well at high levels. Another thing you also would kind of want to consider here is throwing on some casting speed. As you're casting the fourth ability of Equinox quite often, and also you'll be casting Terrify quite often. Those are two abilities with pretty long cast animations. You might want to try that out. So that's going to be basically it. Now, as far as some other builds for Equinox, uh, they do have a couple, but I'd say the main one is the Nuking Equinox build. Um, some other setups too, you can do a duality Equinox build. It, just like uh, Wukong, you can make a Shadow Clone of your frame that uses your weapons and your mods, and it will fight enemies for you. That's a special augment for Equinox. Every time you use Metamorphosis to change between frames, that's something you can do as well. Equinox also has some other like slowing builds, like Gloom and a slowing field from her three, but that's more of a niche setup. The, the main use is the nuking build. If you don't have Helmuth, you can get Helmuth unlocked from a level three with the Dimos Necrolisk Syndicate, the Entrati. And that, that is going to be basically it for the video, guys. Let me know how you feel about these frames down in the comments down below. I didn't put any builds in the videos, as I said, because most, honestly, for most of these weapons, it's going to be the same kind of build. Uh, I'll, I'll briefly just quickly show you. So... For someone like the Zuge Prime, which I don't even think... I used to have a ribbon for it, I don't have any more. It's just going to be a viral Hunter Munitions build. If you've seen a build for that, you've seen it all. So let's throw Hunter Munitions on here. And there you go. Viral. Uh, crit. Well, I guess the crit mod's not on here. One of the crit mods is missing. So you want to put on Viral, Crit, Hunter Munitions. That's pretty much what you go for for most of these uh, types of weapons. Just because, you know, it, it, it works very well. The Slash Procs bypass the enemy armor. I guess we do have the, the crit mod here. So you just throw a Riven where Vigilante Fervor is. So this thing is a bow. It doesn't have the best uh, fire rate. Now, you might be like, why don't you have any Serration on here? You can throw a Serration on here. But the reason I don't have Serration on here is because Primary Merciless gives you 360% base damage when it's fully stacked up. And that's just diminishing returns with a mod like Malcolm Serration. gives you 155% uh, damage. Now, for the Strat of our Prime, I call it the Bat of our Prime for a reason. It has, like, no base damage at all. It has a lot less base damage. It's got, like, how much is it, like, 30 uh, same kind of build. As you can see, I don't really bother with this thing anymore, but uh, yeah, just throw on Viral Hunter Munitions, and you're good to go. There you go, and then Hunter Munitions. Done. Now, of course, you would throw on a Bane mod and a Exilus adapter here if you really wanted to go full damage. Uh, you'd put on, like, Bane of the Grenier or whatever, whatever uh, faction you were fighting, but it's not worth the Exilus, or rather the uh, primary un unlocker to me, so I'm not going to bother. And for the Tipano Prime... Just go like a slash build with uh, Weeping Wounds and Blood Rush. Pretty standard stuff. All right, guys, that's going to be your Resurgence. Uh, I'm really hoping the next one is going to be Glaive. And then uh, Hydroid's rework is on the way, too. So if they were to drop the Hydroid rework alongside a uh, Hydroid Unvaulting, that could be kind of cool. But we still have a ways to wait until that. In the meantime, guys, I'll see you next time. Uh, borrow tomorrow. And new videos every day on this channel. Appreciate all support. Take it easy. Peace.